Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our final Blackrock Mountain Heroic Super Guide, and this one is for Heroic Nefarian. Nefarian is a intense and often uh, a bit of a slog, that particular battle. Um, but I'd only put it on the medium difficulty slide, maybe slightly harder than average, uh, because you have a very simple game plan. While he is very hard, summoning his 4-2s, destroying your board uh, at the end of uh, Anixia's phase, um, there are very clear tools to use to play around that. Uh, in terms of dealing with his endless stream of 4-2s, you obviously want a lot of uh, ways to just deal 2 damage to the board, between explosive sheeps, abominations, in more modern times, primordial drakes, etc. Um, and you often want to sneak in a little bit of heal, so that if you do get low from a combination of his early pressure um, and uh, Anixia's phase where he's blasting you for extra, you can heal back up. Um, and then basically you just want to play minions with a lot of death rattle, so that when Anixia uh, dies and your board is cleared, uh, you're still left with a few guys. And then you have two additional cards which can help you even further. Back then Kel'Thuzad was amazing, because if you drop that on the same turn as he cleared your board, you get your whole board back and you'll kill him pretty quickly. Uh, the other addition in modern times is Nazoth the Corruptor. Even if you don't have your uh, Kel'Thuzad, if you can uh, kill him uh, without using ma any, if you can kill Anixia without using any mana, uh, he clears your board. You then drop Nazath and summon back a whole board full of death rattles, including uh, often an explosive sheep, which will continue to clear out the next four twos he plays. Nerubian eggs, which will pop from that damage summon four fours, and sludge belchers to give you taunt, uh, so that if so that it's harder for him to slip damage through. Uh, that's pretty much the game plan. So basically, if you can uh, get a bit of uh, board maintenance early and have either strong death rattles like Sneed Shredder, Piloted Golems going into Anixia's death, or a Kel'Thuzad or an Azoth, uh, you're pretty much golden. So let's look at some concrete decks. Druid we did in modern times, and as a result, we have some very powerful board management tools like Primordial Drake uh, to combine with uh, the explosive sheep um, and um, Baron Geddon that we already have in there. Even Corrupted Seer makes the cut for its ability to do uh, two damage. Um, and uh, Abominations as well. So plenty of ways to deal the two damage. Um, we have Nerubian Eggs, like I said, to pop when you do do that two damage, leaving you a 4-4 four -four for some good board control. Mistress of Mixtures for extra healing. Uh, Tree of Life, so that if you do stabilize, let's say you, uh, you know, have control of the board, uh, but, you know, you're very low on health, you're just Tree of Life, and suddenly dying quickly is not an issue. You can take your time to kill Anixia. Um, and set up a board where you will be able to Kel'Thuzad or Nazoth to have um, very powerful minions out and a full board to be able to finish off Nefarian in his final phase. Hunter is the class we used back in the day, not even modern times, to defeat Nefarian with only basic and common cards. Um, and we obviously have a similar AoE uh, to be able to deal two damage, like Explosive Sheep and Explosive Trap. Um, unleash the Hounds, obviously key to be able to um, deal with uh, when he does have uh, those uh, threats out as well. And we even include Timberwolves so that they can easily do the two damage necessary to kill those. Uh, Cult Master works really well because he, he'll often, you know, he can quickly fill up his board. So if you uh, do something like Timberwolf... Uh, unleash the Hounds with a Cult Master, if you have that much mana, you'll not only clear his board, but draw a bunch of cards, which can get you to the uh, Death Rattles you need, like Harvest Golems, Piloted Shredder, to be able to, when you do kill him, still have some semblance of a board, Haunted Creepers, etc., some semblance of a board uh, to then put out big threats like Force Tank Max, and if he can't deal with it, uh, finish him off with some heavy hitters. Um, and of course, we have Mad Scientist to cheat out the Explosive Trap early because it's so critical. Hunter's Mark to be able to deal with any bigger threats. Um, and Scavenging Hyena is a nice backup to be able to build up a, a potentially big, uh, difficult for him to deal with uh, threat. Uh, if you do grow that pretty large, you can keep growing it large by killing off your beasts. 
This is how I took him down. Definitely not easy, but definitely possible to beat him with basic and common cards only. Mage uh, resembles the typical common modern deck you would use. You have your Nazoth and Kel'Thuzad, uh, your deal 2 damage themes again, uh, same as we talked about with Druid, uh, your Death Rattles, similar set again, uh, also the Fugan and Starleg combo. This deck I didn't find room for Belchers, um, but still got by without. We have Mad Scientist to cheat out Ice Barriers, just give you like a bunch more life essentially. Um, and uh, we have Sylvanas, a very nice death rattle. And in addition to Baron Ged and the mage specific one of Flame Leviathan, at some point you draw that. Hopefully it's during one of Nefarian's phases and you have yet another way to basically for free without even playing anything, uh, just clear out whatever 4-2s he has on the board. And Ronin's a fun little extra on a death rattle to get out, which can give you a bunch of arcane missiles, which again are actually very effective for uh, clearing out uh, whatever 4-2s he is summoning at that point. Paladin, as we've talked about before, packs a punch in terms of healing. So we do have double forbidden healing to get you back up once you've stabilized, and Ragnaros Light Lord to potentially heal you a bunch of times. Other than that, uh, we didn't find space for Nazoth in this one, uh, but we, it's, it still is the same theme of a bunch of Death Rattles, even the Fugan and Starleg package, both Sludge Belchers this time, um, and uh, Kel'Thuzad to be able to drop uh, at the point where you do kill Anixia. Avenging Rats make it into this to clear out his 4-2s. Uh, Wickerflame, Wickerflame Burn Bristle, a uh, nice early game one to be able to kill his 4-2s and heal you at the same time, and that should prevent you from dying early. With Priest, it should come as no surprise with all the talk we've uh, been talking about Death Rattle uh, to base this deck on Awaken the Makers, because not only do you run your usual Death Rattles, which are great, and Kel'Thuzad and Nazoth uh, to work with them, but uh, then you can, uh, if you are low in life, play Amara to get back up to 40. Um, Priest obviously has the nice uh, Shadow of Death to deal with bigger threats. Uh, we're on Loot Hoarders for more card draw in this particular one. Um, Holy Novas uh, for extra, obviously, uh, ways to clear his board of those four twos. Primordial Drake, and pretty much the rest is the usual package we've been talking about in all our other modern decks. Rogue is the last of the decks we'll look at that I used in modern times to uh, finish off my project of defeating uh, Nefarian with all classes. Um, and no surprise there, it's going to be the same theme. Kel'Thuzad and Nazoth working with a bunch of Death Rattles um, and uh, Mistress of Mixtures for a bit of healing. The Rogue specific ones uh, are Valspine Slayer, just so good for instantly destroying something of his and getting a minion out. Uh, this one does run heal bots because Rogue has uh, so little other healing and the Mistress of Mixtures often aren't quite enough. Especially if you get a Baron Ged and surviving out, it's helpful for clearing his board but deals damage too as well. And the other Rogue special, we have of C Blade of Cthoons, uh, similar to Valspine Slayers, they just instantly wipe out some big threats. Um, but they also buff your Cthoon to be able to get a big Cthoon out at the end that will really help clear his board of threats and have a huge threat to help wipe him out very quickly. Moving back to some of the older decks we used at the time, in the case of Shaman, we did not have uh, things like Nazath yet, um, but it was a lot of Death Rattle, you'll see more Death Rattle filling this. Getting big threats out by the time Anixia dies, like Sneedzel, Shredder, and Sky Golem is more important. Uh, at the time, I wasn't even running Kel'Thuzad as standard. Um, I more just relied on the strategy, rather than having drawn that one particular card, of getting a bunch of Death Rattles out so that when a, your board is cleared, there's always something left anyway to be able to put pressure on. Uh, Fugan and Starleg, if you can have both of those out when you kill Anixia, you will get two Thaddeuses, which is obviously super nice. We even run Rivendare to double up uh, on Death Rattles as we progress in the game. Uh, we have less AoE options, basically just relying on Lightning Storm uh, to be able to clear his board. Uh, we do run an Annoyatron, that's pretty good for slowing him down, and we can Flame Tongue it. Um, and Undertaker even to grow from all the Death Rattle we're running. Forked Lightning we include as well, because often, you know, when you hero powers, that's just the perfect one-mana answer, though it does overload you. Um, to what he has on the board. We also have uh, Ancestral Spirit, so if we have um, 
you know, very good uh, death rattles out like Sneeds, Old Shredder, and Sky Golems, we can uh, Ancestral Spirit those before the board is wiped uh, to get make the board even stickier and have even more board presence uh, going into Nefarian's final phase. And the overall strategy in Warlock is not too dissimilar. It's a bit of a zoo deck. This time we do have the explosive sheeps. Um, and we obviously have a little more AoE options in Zoo between Demon Wraths um, and Shadow Flame on an arbitrary minion to clear out his board sort of out of desperation. And Implosion is kind of nice here. Implosion a minion and potentially get a bunch of imps which can do a bit more trading into his 4-2s uh, and still leave you over with some other imps to sort of help you trade into other stuff. Just very good value, uh, which is obviously, you know, why it was run back when it first came out in pretty much every Zoo deck. Last but not least, we have the Warrior deck we used back in the day to defeat Nefarian. And again, it's uh, similar stuff. In this particular one, we have quite a set, uh, all of these at the bottom, some very beefy uh, Death Rattle minions. Um, we even have Can and Sylvanas on top of some of what we were running in the other ones, um, which uh, leaves us with one Abomination to act as uh, AoE in addition to Explosive Sheep. Um, shield block for a bit of life gain and card draw, death spike good for helping finish off things. Um, War Axe been nerfed, uh, but still good for just, you know, dealing with one of his hero powers. Um, while you do have your hero power which gains you armor, um, this deck doesn't run a lot of healing. Um, obviously in modern times you could throw in things like Mistress of Mixtures instead of Zombie Chow, more AoEs like Primordial Drake, and obviously the Kel'Thuzad Nazoth, um, sort of one-offs uh, that we use in modern times, but even back in the day, this deck was strong enough to take out Nefarian in heroic mode. That's how we took him out with every single class, um, and even the Hunter deck we uh, showed near the beginning, basic and common cards only at the time, and you could obviously construct an even stronger deck nowadays. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the heroic super guides uh, for Blackrock Mountain, uh, soon enough, we'll be moving on to League of Explorers and seeing how we took on all of those. See you later.